What's up everybody? In today's video, I'm gonna show you the top nine items that sold in the category of vintage. If you're new to the channel, this is how my what sold videos work. I give you the top nine items that I got from my sales and I show you only one category at a time so that you can focus. That way you become an expert in that category. If you keep watching these videos week by week, then you can add whatever categories you like to your store so you can make more money. And today's video is special. Stay until the end because I have a bonus for you. Instead of just the nine items, I have a tenth item that I'm gonna show you why it's very special and I'm gonna talk to those three motherfuckers that were talking about this item to me. I also answer questions and go through comments and talk about them. So if you ever have a comment or something to say, or if you have a question, leave it in the comments below and maybe it'll make it to the video. And before we get started, let me show you my favorite vintage item in the library, the Toyota Way. This is an excellent book. It talks about running a lean business. Running a lean business, all it means is that you are getting rid of all the bullshit that you don't need in your process and focusing on your customer. So if there are things that you're doing that are taking up your time that don't need to be in your process, you remove them. It's an excellent book. I recommend it for everybody. And I'm going to link it down below if you want to get it. I've read it plenty of times. It's got all these stickies because I'm putting something together in months from now probably, but I'm going to put a video together that explains in my terms and puts this book to work for the reselling community. That's what I really want to do. And I can tell you that this book works. And let me tell you why. People talk shit to me all the time. Damien, you said that you can listen two minutes? Damien, you cannot listen two minutes? Yet, I listen two minutes on average. It takes me two minutes to list an item. Damien, your conveyor belt system doesn't work. I tried it. It no work. It no work. You dumb. Yet, mine works perfectly fine and very efficiently. And one of the reasons is because I understand to take out all that bullshit, all the extra steps, even if it's a hand grab, even if it's where you place your tape, even if it's where you put your bags, how you source, how you inventory, all that stuff, everything is a process. If you make it so efficient that nothing else can squeeze in, like no extra time is lost, you're going to make so much more money. And speaking of that, let me show you how much more money you can make by the sales. Here we go. Vintage Scrabble Deluxe Edition Rotating Turntable Game 1989. I bought it for four bucks, sold for $34.99, $19.99 shipping. After fees and everything, I brought home $36.25. Mine is a $4. I brought home $32.25. Like I always say, if you don't normally buy board games, Scrabble is one of those board games that you should be buying, especially the vintage ones. You can sell the boards. You can sell the little planks. You can sell the letters. You can even sell the boxes or the instruction manuals. And Scrabble is one of those games that everybody collects. And it's just a good game to pick up. You can usually find them at estate sales, garage sales, or thrift stores for almost nothing. And even if you're missing pieces, that's fine. Just start collecting a bunch of them. And then you can sell the letters or the bars or, again, the boards or, or whatever. They make money. First question, at Kathy Repack 8333 says, Why doesn't the board slip on the floor? I like the board on an angle for picks, but my floor is wood and I just see it sliding down. She's referencing best photo setup for eBay Poshmark Clothing 2024 on a budget. This is where I show you guys how to make my setup. It's a board that I have behind the door. It opens up. I hang my clothes and I shoot on it. You can build it for under $100. Well, $100 when I shot the film or the video because, you know, Biden's America, mother Everything's so much more expensive. However, you can build it for almost nothing. And it works really well and it takes up almost no space. You can fold it back up, put it behind the door, and it's awesome. I'm going to link the video down below if you guys haven't seen it already so you can build your own. Here we have bronze ornate door handles, hardware chair, a back plate. I remember these. And these have a very good story behind them and a test. I paid 35 bucks for them at auction. I remember because I paid quite a bit for them. They sold for $65.95, $19.99 shipping after fees and everything. I brought home $66.54. Mine is a $35. That's about $31 in profit, let's just say. These I ran a test on, and these sold globally. I wanted a lot more money, so I, I, did, I paid $35 because I thought they were going to sell over $100. But they didn't, and that's fine. What I'm going to say now is that I ran a test on these. I had them up for two years, and they never moved. I took them down, and then I removed the photos... I shot new photos exactly the same. I didn't change anything. Just shot new photos. 
and then uploaded them again with the same title and the same description because I wanted to run a test. And I ran it on three products. It just happens that this is one that I'm showing you guys now. What happened was that three weeks later, they all sold. Now, what does that mean? It could just mean that nobody wanted this shit for two years and then it sold in three weeks. But it could also mean that the photos that I removed and I put back up, the AI thinks it's new product because photos, if you guys didn't know, they have a digital stamp always. When you shoot a photo on a digital phone or when you shoot them in a camera even, they have a stamp on them. They have information. So AI can read that. Algorithms can read that. So maybe when you remove the photos completely, you can leave everything else the same, but you take new photos for old product, it'll sell. But that's my tinfoil hat talking, so <laughs> I'm not sure. If you guys have a conspiracy theory like that or know more information about this, let me know in the comments below because I want to get as much info as possible. And eventually, if I do get to talk to eBay, I want to bring this shit up. First comment, at Rebel in the Sky says, I'm afraid as fuck to ship globally. I feel like more scams can happen. I'm a newbie on the bay, so that might be an ignorant thought, but I am considering it. She's referencing shipping on eBay for beginners, free, flat versus calculated. Definitely, definitely, you should sell uh, globally, but through the eBay global shipping program. That's how those sold right now. The eBay shipping program, all you have to do is you send it to the local warehouse, and local I mean here in the U.S. They have a warehouse, and then they ship it from there. Once it gets to their warehouse, basically, your job is done. If it gets broken, if it gets stolen, if it gets lost, whatever, eBay will take care of it. If there's any customer service issues, eBay will take care of it. You can just redirect the customer. So why would you not do that? It's just a win-win situation. You should definitely sell globally. But with that in mind, if you are thinking sell globally but by yourself, meaning you ship it from your home to wherever else in the world, that is a lot harder because you get to run into issues like maybe they said that it was stolen. They never arrived. It arrived broken. And you're gonna, you can definitely get a lot of scammers that way. So it's up to you. But I recommend if you're gonna do it, eBay Global Shipping only. Here we have vintage clock parts, lot movements, faces, hands, West Clocks, Gilbert. For those of you that know clocks, West Clocks, Gilbert, Waterbury, very good clocks. There is a pack of or a lot of 21 items. It says zero, but I bought it for five bucks because I remember I got it at auction. And people were telling me, oh, you bought trash for $5. And I said, oh, here you go, idiots. Because they didn't know any better. I bought a big ass box. I already sold through a lot of the movements. This is just the leftovers. I sold through a bunch of the movements. So this is all profit. Everything else already sold. And look, I sold it for 70 bucks, $19.99 shipping. After fees and everything, I brought home $54.04. So, hey, for those of you at the auction... <laughs> Oh man, people love to talk shit. What I will say about clock parts is that they will always sell because nobody's making them anymore. And people that repair clocks need the gears, need the springs, need the screws, need all kinds of shit that you can get on there. So if you sell them in a lot, somebody will buy them and they will use them. I wish I had more time and somebody to teach me how to do this because it's very difficult. I'm good with my hands, but clock making like this, oh man, it's so hard, but it's so interesting. If you guys have never seen anything like that, you should check out videos online. It's just great to, to learn about other things other than resale. Let me just sell and make money. Let me sell and make money. You should really learn about other things. And clock making or clock repair is definitely one of them. Ed Lots Odds and Ends says, Damien, love the info. Keep it up. Can you explain what you meant by protecting your store by selling a $4 DVD? Definitely. They're referencing an old video where I had mentioned how I sell $4 DVDs that are either break even, I lose money or I make a little bit of money, and how I protect my account. Essentially what I'm doing is that I'm creating more transactions on my account so that the defects, when something, when I do something wrong, like if, I, if I'm late on a shipment or if I have to cancel a transaction because it's broken or whatever, then it'll hit me less. That means that it won't take, it'll take more of those bad transactions so they can take the top rated seller status away from me. Look, I don't want to explain everything right now. You should check out the video. I'm going to link it down below. It is a great way for you to protect your account, and it is a smart way to do it. Here we have vintage Brighton Balboa purse, handbag, black pebble leather. I bought it for $388. Sold for $38.98. $12.99 shipping. After fees and everything, I brought home $29.90. Let's just call it $30. Bucks. Minus the four that I paid, I brought home $26 in profit. Brighton is definitely a pickup, and especially when it's vintage because they still make purses. They're still in business. 
Brighton is a very good brand. You just have to make sure not to pick up the Chinese fucking knockoffs that you can find everywhere. And one of the ways that you can tell is that inside the bag there is a leather patch that is stitched onto the lining. That's one way you can tell. You can tell by the stitching, you can tell by the type of leather, and there's a bunch of other ways, but it is a great pickup. So whenever you see it, just make sure that you buy it you know, cheap enough and that the leather is not all jacked up and you're good to go to make money. And Nora Suggs, 87, 88 cents. <laughs> I'm not even going to say anything about that. Love your videos, not only informative, but entertaining as well, especially the bloopers at the end. Well, thank you very much for laughing at me being an idiot. <laughs> do you do calls for all levels? How does that work? Before I answer the question, let me give a shout out to the newest three members of the Resolutions Posse. Jacqueline Clark, What the Fat, <laughs> and Robert Parker. Thank you very much for your support. It is very, very, very appreciated. And let me explain why. She is referencing every single time that I say become a member of the Resolutions Posse. That's what she's referencing. I started doing call outs for bolos to all levels as of right now. $3 level, $5 level, and $25 level. Depending on what level you are, you get different things in the channel. But for right now, I am providing it to everybody. And in fact, let me show you something. Okay, I'm going to show you something that I called out last week. Artificial tears. I got these at Walmart. And this is not even like the best brand. There's a bunch of other ones. I got these for 75 cents a piece. And I already sold out. Within one week, because I got these during the trip when I was going to Burnet, Texas last week. This was an excellent pickup. And it's stuff like this that I call out. And I call these out to the posse because I want to give you as much value as I can for your hard-earned money. First off, let me say this. I am not promising that this is what you're signing up for. This is the only thing that I'm going to do and I'm going to do it all the time every single day. I've been on groups that charge you $35, $50, whatever... And oh my God, we're going to give you all the money. We're going to tell you where to go and Marshalls and TJ Maxx and Ross every single day. You look at this and you, we have AI looking and scraping for information and all this type of shit. That's what they promise. Not everybody, but a lot of the groups, I would say about 90% of the groups that I've been on, they pitch that. Yet I find one item every 30 call outs. And it's like, what the hell, man? So I am not selling you that. This is a bonus. What I'm selling you is education. You are helping me stay in business with YouTube so that we can grow together. That's how you're helping. This is an extra and I love doing this because I want you guys to make money even if it's competition for me. And let me do this call out too while I'm at it. Robert Parker just became, hey what's up Robert? Just became part of the Resolutions Posse and he said, hey man, I remember you called out those lacrosse sticks and I went to where I, where you went because he lives really close to me, like in the same area within like say a two hours or an hour and a half. And he went to the same thrift store and he picked up the lacrosse sticks that I could have easily picked up. And I don't care. I'm not greedy. I want to help everybody. I still have a wholesale business and I still have Amazon business and I have my shit unlocked to where I am able to to give pieces of the pie away because I am not a greedy person by nature. I'm just not. So that's all I'm trying to do. If you guys become part of the Resolutions Posse, all you have to do is join down below. Again, it helps me run the channel and I show you bolos like this. I've sent out a ton, by the way. A lot more than just the one from last week. And I try to do them as best as I can and as often as I can. Moving on, here we have Vintage Cooking Magic Cookbooks Culinary Arts Institute. These were awesome. 1954, 1955, volume of two. I bought them for $5 each, sold them for $69.92, $12.99 shipping after fees and everything. I kept $48.72 minus the 10 bucks, $38.72 in profit. I love these cookbooks. I, I was going to keep them, but I said, no, it's too much money. It's fine. I, I have a huge collection of cookbooks anyways, but these specifically do well because they were the, the Culinary Arts Institute. And of course they were vintage. They were in binders. And they were so happy when they received them. Don't skip out on cookbooks. Not all cookbooks make money. But you just have to look for the comps. But don't skip out on cookbooks. Next question. Add the peasant. <laughs> says, where's a good place to look for bulk pallets of one product? Thanks for the great vid. He's referencing how to make money on eBay with retail arbitrage. Great, great question. Let me say this. This is not going to be news to anybody. 
You can go to liquidation.com, bulk.com, wholesale ninjas, and so on. It's stuff that you can find easily online. But here is the angle that you should be taking instead of that. Go to your nearest wholesale places. And if you don't know, you have to start Googling and see who's around you within three hours, let's just say. You can't do it 30 minutes from here, 20 minutes from here. There's not enough area. Use a three-hour area. So it's going to be about, shit, 200 miles each way. But find who the wholesalers are. Go to them and talk to them. Tell them, this is what I'm looking for. What do you sell? Okay, well, I'm looking for electronics. I don't have electronics. Okay, no problem. Let me give you my info. Call me once they, co once they come in. When you create relationships like that, that is the only way to stay ahead of the game. Because once it hits online, there's millions of people looking at it or thousands of people. When it's local, it's very rare when it's that many people. It's usually hundreds. And most of them are the way that I'm telling you. You make a connection. They'll call you when they receive the product that you want to buy. And then you go over there and you buy it. It's as simple as that. Plus, you don't have to do all this research. Maybe they can send you the packing slip so you can see or the manifest so you can see what's in there. Or... They're doing all the, the background for you. They're doing all the checks for you. They already know that you're looking for headphones or they're looking for phones or car parts or whatever. And they'll call you. So stop doing so much work. Make a connection and that person wants to make money and you want to make money. So you guys will work together. I hope that helps. Here we have classic country music, 1970, 1974 cassette. Oh, these are a set of two. I bought them for 25 cents each. Sold them for $14.94, $4.99 shipping. After fees and everything, I brought home $11.53. So $11 in profit. Cassettes still make money. Especially the heavy metal ones like Metallica, ACDC, Iron Maiden, Megadeth, and so on. They will make money. Some of them make more, more money than others. But just make sure that you check comps. When I was going through these, I knew that these were going to sell for a decent amount. Because they were a set. Sets especially do very well because... When you want to buy something, usually you want the entire collection. Next question, Galva 3406 says, What do you do if the buyer has the exact product like the flex paste, but his is dry, so he orders yours and sends his back? She is referencing how to not get scammed on eBay, part two. I have two videos about scams, about not getting scammed as a seller. And she is referencing something that happened to me. I sent out this thing called flex paste, and they sent back a dry one. I know for a fact that it wasn't dry. And how do I know? Because I had sold a bunch of them and I opened one for me as personal use and that whole lot was perfectly fine. So they f***ed me. And all I can tell you is you got to put on your big boy pants or your big girl pants. Don't get mad. Just say, okay, f*** this guy or gal. Block them or do whatever you have to and move on. That's it. It's just a part of doing business. You can't really prove that you didn't send the dry one and you can't prove that they did. So you're going to lose whatever you do. So don't waste time. Don't be mad because that's just going to stress you out. Just move on and call it business losses. That's it. Here we have vintage Sanyo Betacord, Betamax. Oh my goodness. Who remembers Betamax? And for those of you that are real young, bruh, this was even, I mean, I'm 42 and this was before my time still. I bought it for five bucks, sold it for $59.99, $29.99 shipping after fees and everything. I brought home $54.52 minus the $5, $49.52 in profit. If I was able to fix this, I could have sold this for anywhere from $250 to $450 because they don't sell these anymore. So anytime that you can fix a very old recorder like this or player, man, they make so much money. And look at that. The guy sent a buyer's note. I see your feedback. You know how to pack and cushion very well. Usually the first thing they say is very well packed. Thank you very much. But he still goes on to say, please use a large enough new double wall box. Two layers of large bubble around it. Don't forget the corners. Then float in a sea of tightly packed shipping peanuts, blah, blah, blah. So this guy is trying to tell me how to ship. And I'll tell you what. I know that this has happened to you guys. And one thing to note is that don't get mad. Maybe a lot of other sellers aren't good shippers like me and you. Maybe he's got a lot of shipments that were all shitty packed and broken and his item broke or whatever. And he has an issue. So now he has to tell you. I cracked up and I didn't listen to any of that shit. I ship how I ship and I'm a pro and rarely do I get anything busted. And it didn't bust, by the way. He, 
he uh, messaged me back like, hey, th this came out perfectly well. Thank you very much. But when something like this happens, don't get mad. Don't get all touchy-feely. Just let it go and ship it out. Just make sure you do it well. Next question at the Ageless Reseller 2024 says, question, do you look up the sell-through rate on eBay for all the retail items you purchase? This is referencing how to make money on eBay with retail arbitrage, what sold part two. I do not look for all of my products. And I'll tell you my, I'll tell you the reasoning. If it's a single item, I don't have time to be scanning everything because it's like, oh, you're going to make $3. You're going to make $4. Okay, but you just wasted five minutes searching. It's like, no. I only really search when it's multiple products or when it's something that has a big investment. So if it's a $50 speaker that I'm buying that's going to resell for $200 or whatever, then I look it up. And I don't just use eBay. I also use SAS, which is Seller Amp, because I also sell on Amazon. And I use other things or other places to find information to see if it's going to make me money. Hope that helps. Here we have vintage Texas license plate, hemisphere, space shuttle, truck, and so on. It's a lot of five, as you can see. Sold for $25.48, $8.99 shipping, after fees and everything. I made $20.41. So let's just call it 20, 20 bucks. I'm showing you this because I have a ton of plates and they always sell. And look at them. They don't even have to be brand new. Yes, some of them are 68, 81, 75, but there's also a new one. It just has to look cool because some people put them up there, uh, like on their bar or their office or wherever. And some people also use them to do crafts. And Rebel in the Sky says, hi, I was wondering if you only sell on eBay. I'm busy enough with selling vintage collectibles and oddities on eBay. I also do coins and bullion and whatnot. I'm not afraid to not sleep. That's interesting. So no, I don't sell just on eBay. I do Amazon and I do wholesale as well. Let me say this though. And I brought this up specifically because she said she's on whatnot. I am approved. I've been approved or whatever approved to be on whatnot for a long time. I've never used it. Is whatnot something that you guys would actually enjoy seeing me do? Would you guys go to the whatnot show and buy stuff? Would that be something that you guys would actually watch? Because I don't like to waste my time. And what I've seen... A lot of these whatnot shows, it's a big ass waste of time unless you have a huge following. And I don't have a huge following. I have 7,000 subscribers, but from the core subscribers, there's not that many. Like it's not 7,000 people. So if you guys would actually enjoy something like that and you guys would want to buy something that's in my store or what I'm offering, let me know in the comments below. I would love to see if this is a viable solution for me to get rid of some of my wholesale or maybe some old product or even some of the new products so I can help you guys find more merchandise. Patricia Corwell books, lot of 10, hardcover and so on. You guys can see I paid $5 each, sold it for $26.96, $14.99 shipping after fees and everything. I brought home $18.25 minus the $5 that I paid, $13.25 in profit. Books sell. It just sucks that they take up a lot of space and they're very heavy. But books do sell, especially in lots. If you have one author that's a good author, because not all authors sell. But if it's a good author, look into book selling uh, as lots. Ad Robert Parker 2669 asks, I noticed at my local San Vicente thrift store that swim trunks were all aging out to 99 cents. And they all have decent 10 to $15 comps. Okay, even though these won't be popular until next spring, summer, should I go ahead and list them as long as I've got plenty of free listings for my store? Great question. And Robert is part of the Resolutions Posse. So we've actually gone back and forth with this already. Let me say this. If you don't list something, for sure you will never be able to sell it. If it's not up for sale, you can't sell it. If it is up for sale and it's the wrong time of the year, there's still a possibility you can sell it. So for sure no sale or possible sale, I always choose possible sale. Now, the downside to that is that if you keep doing this and you have too much product that for sure won't sell until March, you're dragging down your store's STR or sell-through rate from here to then. So it's a toss up. I don't like keeping product unless it's a, a big amount. Like my bulk sales, I keep. I don't put them up until the following season. Like my Easter stuff, it's all in the warehouse and I'm not touching it. I'm not putting it up until then. But if you guys are doing that, it just, it's a toss up. You have to make your own decisions on this, but I know what I would choose. And I always choose to have a possibility of making money versus for sure not making money at all. And thanks again for being part of the Resolutions Posse, brother. And here's the bonus that I promise you. Vintage, the undead 8mm movie, Roger Corman, Ken Films, 1957. 
I bought it for three bucks, sold for $47.97, $6.99 shipping. If you guys notice, there is no fees, there's nothing on there yet. Well, transaction fees, but there's no ad fee, no shipping because I haven't shipped it yet. It sold right before I started shooting this video. And the reason I wanted to include it is because there were three idiots that sent me bullshit saying, you don't know what you're doing. I saw it for $11. Oh my God, you're an idiot. You think you're going to get 50? Well, what are you going to say now? What do you guys have to say now? F*** you. Sometimes what these people don't understand is that you have to hold on to good product. Product that is unique. And guess what? Halloween is just around the corner. Look at the price. It says $47.97. I started at $49.99. That means that I was lowering it by $1.01 as my program, as my process dictates. So it's been in my store for two and a half months. And it's sold still. But they didn't see that two months ago. Why is it going to sell for $50? you are an idiot. They wanted me to sell it for $11 or $20 or whatever the, everybody else is selling it for. Sometimes you have to trust your gut. Do what nobody else is doing. Because if you keep doing what everybody else is doing, you're never going to beat them. You're never going to be better and you're never going to succeed over everybody else. And you know what? I love talking shit to these fucking idiots. Because they, they can sometimes push and push and push some YouTubers or some other people that are in the comments and they scare them out of making more profit. They scare them out of making good decisions. That's why you should find a YouTuber that you like if you trust them and what their processes are because they can show you with proof or because they, that you understand that you've tried what they're telling you and it works. Don't listen to anybody else. Just let them say whatever the fuck they want. Let them be the losers. Let them be the ones selling it for $11 instead of $47. Woohoo! Dumbasses. And that's it, everybody. Those were the top nine items plus the bonus that sold in the category of vintage. To continue to support the channel, you can always buy a shirt, a hat, or a logo sticker from the store below. You can also become part of the Resolutions Posse and get all the perks that I talked about already in the video that I won't mention again. As always, give this video a like, share this with anybody that needs to see it, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, so you don't miss awesome videos like this. See you in the next one. Peace! And as always, cheers. Today I'm drinking tea that I made, te de canela, or cinnamon tea. So it's a cinnamon stick, water, honey, uh, two bags of moringa tea, and two bags of turmeric. This is my own concoction. I have a like a sore throat and my my chick says that it's probably allergies but I'm not really allergic to anything so I don't know maybe I'm getting a cold again which is very rare because I was just sick last month and usually I get sick once a year like really sick and then I'm good for the rest of the year so I don't know what's going on but I'm trying to to drink all this shit and I have it in this big ass thermos so I've been drinking it all day I love it it's my mom's, it's not my entire mom's recipe. My mom's recipe is just cinnamon sticks, uh, lemon, and, oh, and I forgot I put lemon too. Cinnamon sticks, lemon, and honey. But I added the turmeric and the moringa because they're supposed to be real good for you. Cheers. A su puta madre, está bien caliente. El pelo, el pelo. La greña. Te digo, dejo la puerta abierta por un ratito, 10 pinches minutos y las pinches moscas se meten. It's for the dogs, that's why I leave the door open. Oh, translation for those of you that don't speak Spanish. I left the door open for only 10 minutes so the dogs can be in and out. And I'm full of flies now. Time to kill. I don't like to ever provide too much information to anybody, but if you guys, if any of you have psoriasis, it is the worst thing not the worst, but you know what I mean. It is one of the worst things that you can feel because you're always itchy. I'm constantly, sometimes I make myself bleed because I'm scratching my skin. And all it is is that you get dry patches of skin all over your body. Sometimes it's on the face. In my case, sometimes it's on the ear. It just, it sucks. It sucks. So if you have it, I'm sorry. I understand. It sucks. And there's no cure. It's forever.